I've had a slice of cake and I'm excited to do a podcast with you, Michael. Oh, that's don't. Did, yeah. <laughs> I've had a slice of cake as well, but it hasn't made me feel the same. <laughs> I you've got no, you've got no decorative cushions over there. All right. That feels bad. I've been deprived. Yeah, you've been deprived I've, of feng shui. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I kind of, I don't know. Feng oh, shui is a, a lady boy I met in Thailand. Really? Um, <laughs> you've never been to Thailand, have you? No, I'd like to go to Thailand though. So, that's the kind of shit you wouldn't do. Like that's kind of shit. Well, fuck that, a lady boy? Huh? Fuck no, him. no, I do. I do think you'd fuck a lady boy. Um, like, I, I do think because I do think you're you are a, a bit gay. As I said, I am myself. I think it's clear. I think that's a lot of the appeal of this. Yes, is I think that people we're latent homosexuals, very homophobic homosexuals. Yeah. Um, what well, we're not? I'm not fucking homophobic. That's all you, baby. Um, you're you're the nasty. I think here. homophobia is fucking gay. <laughs> yeah, I'm the. I believe I'm the moral conscience of the podcast. You believe that, do you? I, that's what I believe. In yeah. your heart and in your ass. In my heart and in my uh, tingling asshole. Um, <laughs> my male G-spot, that's my what I believe. My male g is screaming, <laughs> screams to me, you are the moral... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're a good man, Mike. <laughs> and it also tells me, be careful of that cunt to your right. Let me double check. I just forgot to check the levels. Yeah, we're fine. Oh, we're good, are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, levels of Ichi. He's dead. Anyway. Um... <laughs> The man we've, died. Uh, Didn't we, Avicii, Avicii was a fucking, there was a boozy Susie now. Was he a boozy? I, I would have thought in that scene it would have been more drugs. I, that's what I thought as well. But apparently he would, which I thought was like very like fucking a throwback to like the 40s or the 50s. I think it was just like pure fucking like gin and whiskey. Like he was, that you was know. His, whiskey was his mixer? That was his fucking, that was his tipple. That's, gin and whiskey? <laughs> gin and whiskey, yeah. He would, he would mix, <laughs> he would mix gin with whiskey. And because he was a Vici, no one, no one told him that's not a great idea, lad. They were like, you're the best DJ ever. Um, I was he the best? I don't know what makes really a good DJ. I've never understood. I, and, I, and secretly in my heart, I don't believe they're doing anything. No, I mean, it's not like hugely impressive. Yeah. Like, to be honest, like a, a DJ just, they, they put on a song I like and people are like, this lad's class. And I'm like, is he? Because I've done that. <laughs> I've done that with my phone before. But yeah, when you get out of the aux cable on a car journey. Oh, honestly, You feel yeah. like Avicii when yeah. you put on Avicii. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I throw it on and then I'm just like that to the people in the back of the car. Well, I'm this like, is the thing. Going. You're more of like a Zumba instructor than you are a musician. That's right. And I think that that is, I suppose, and I think that's where, like, say, David Guetta excelled was doing was doing that. Like, he could do that really well. Yes, and also his activism, I thought, was brilliant. What was that thing that Guetta did that was, like, really lame and stupid? Do you mean his brilliant activism on Black Lives Matter? Oh, yeah. What was it? When he got on stage and he was like, uh, in the wake of the George Floyd uh, moment, there is so much violence and so much division in society. I just hope that we can move to a better place for everyone. Yeah. So, shout out to his family. And do, do you think, and would it be a stretch to think <laughs> that George's re- family were all like fucking, <laughs> absolutely, their grief had been washed away by the beat in a lot of ways. Who, George who? Do, 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 do. Thank you, David. Quetta. Damn, she's a sexy bitch. Do, you know? Well, what was mad as well is he had remixed the Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. I mean, that's such scum anyway, isn't it? Like, <laughs> isn't it scum that these DJs are like, you know, like hot, like piggybacking on the back of these just <clears throat> massive, like cultural civil rights moments and just like, just remix it in? Because you can't say you don't like the song then, can you? But the DJs will put anything before the drop. Yeah. Anything at all. They'll absolutely just nab. It could yes. be like, you would have like an environmental themed like DJ set. Yeah. And they'd be like, wah, 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 wah. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or like, yeah. wah, 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 wah. Six million. It definitely wasn't six million. Bam. <laughs> Bam. It feels high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God, you some little fool. Um, Gwet is a little kind of a, a little uh, Weasley character. I don't I trust was, him. I've I never was, trusted him. I was baffled by how old he was when I found out how old he was. 
Gwen is in his early 70s? I mean, he's Bush. I think he's in his 50s now. Is he in his 50s? Yeah, when he started to become big, I swear he was 40. Right, yeah. I suppose he was probably right. He was probably scurrying around like a little like a little rat on the scene for years. Well, he's who the movie Ratatouille is, is uh, was based Was it based on, on David Quetta? Yeah. Originally. He was a rat that lived in a chef's hat. He lived in a chef, chef's hat. And then he, he like met Akon. And that and changed they saved things. Africa together. Yeah, was, was that was that? Akon and built like a city. Mm-hmm. Did Akon build a city? I think he's been doing a lot of stuff that, <laughs> like behind the scenes, that's questionable. I think he did. I think he might be like the king of the continent of Africa. Like I think yeah. he gave up like making songs with rappers and like has become like the new EDM. Everyone in. thinks he's helping, but Akon has actually recolonized Africa. Yeah, <laughs> and, and the national anthem is lonely. <laughs> <laughs> I am so lonely. Uh, you can mm. put the blame on me. He has a song where he's like, "You can put the blame on me," and then like, and it's kind of like he's shouldering the blame for all this stuff. And then he's like, "How was I to know she was 14 <laughs> He just says it in the song. Is that, How was I to know she was fourteen? Oh yeah, that's a lyric in a song. Absolutely, it's a lyric in a song. Yes, because he was like. Did, did over 21s the club said he's like how is that to know she was 14 um, <laughs> and he just threw it in a song there it's like I didn't even know about this till you told me Akon you couldn't get that under your hat you know what I mean that's so funny to yeah. just be like hey I didn't know and it's like nobody was asking Akon what yeah. the fuck are you talking about that's nobody was funny. asking you yell flute but coming but, back to the yeah, Thailand thing. You think I would fuck a lady boy? Yeah. Now, lady boys, uh, uh, th- that's like a one way thing. Like, as in Thailand's very big for the lady boys, and that is, uh, I don't know what how they would identify, but they're they're women and they have penises. Yeah. And they're boys and they're ladies. Yeah. Is there a country that specialises in gentlemen girls? And would this just be kind of a a, a classier version of that? No, 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 because it's the opposite. It's not classy oh. here, because it's ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen's the opposite of ladies, and girls is the opposite of boys, so I think it's gentlemen girls. The right. gentlemen girls of Baghdad. <laughs> you take Baghdad? Well, I think, that, 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 I think that there's a lot of countries in the Middle East that could do it like a facelift in terms of tourism, and I think that yes. that, like somewhere like The gentlemen girls of Aleppo. yeah. Exactly, or Kirkstown, or these places who no one knows what's really going on there. It doesn't seem like fun. No one's yeah. going there to spend their uh, their holiday money. But perhaps if there was, what would they be? They would be uh, women. W- w- <laughs> <laughs> You've actually brought. You actually hurt my head on this one. What would this be? So a lady boy. Yeah. Born a boy, very effeminate looking. Yeah. Hot, uh, uh, but with a dick. Yes. And fake tits. Right. Uh, a gentleman girl would be born as a girl, ah, but very gruff. But, so we have them um, all over the city. <laughs> very strikingly handsome. Right. I mean, yeah, I would say the gentleman girls of fucking Balamina. Yeah. <laughs> it's just everybody's ma. That's right. Just every camogie team in Ireland. They're, they're the all gentleman, gentleman girls. girls. <laughs> yeah. Gentleman Bound the slow. That's right. They have an all-Ireland gentleman girls final. It's like... They have competitions. It's a lot of fun. I remember uh, I made a joke at the. Um, I was on Zoom. Yeah. I hosted the awards for uh, East Belfast GAA, and uh, the it was in November that time, and and I'd written. I'd basically like been watching too much Don Rickles, <laughs> and wrote a bunch of like roast jokes for everybody involved. Even though it was quite like, aren't we great for letting Protestants play Gaelic and stuff? Yeah. Um. And I wrote a little roast over. I was like, it's great to see the men's team, you know, really getting involved um, doing Movember and raising a lot of money that way. Yeah. Good to see some of the ladies doing it as well. Oh, because <laughs> you have beards, ye fucking pigs, ye old beasts. How did that go down? I don't know. It was on Zoom. All right. You just got to say it and move you just on. just fuck it out there into the ether and it lands how it lands. I learned a lot from Zoom gigs. That's how I do all gigs now. You just, you, you throw it out and then you go. Blinkers on. Yeah. <laughs> I've got my big autistic ear defenders on. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a funny way to come out on stage. That's like how uh, like DiCaprio uh, fucks people. With ear... De- oh yeah, he like sensory... Doesn't he just lie there and there's a queue of women outside that come in and fuck him? Well, well so what? He has a little like um, a li- little fucking scout that he's, that's been hired. Like with a wee scarf? 
Yeah, and, and a just, woggle, and he's got badges for how many people he gets to fuck DiCaprio. Well, that's right. Well, like think about like say like a baseball scout or a soccer Be prepared. scout. Yeah, it, well, not really like making campfires, but more people who like oh, like as like a football scout. Yeah, I thought exactly. you meant like a like a boy scout. He's he's hired the boy scouts to find him women to fuck. I don't think so. I don't <laughs> think they've using been, their compasses. Yeah, but then I, I'd imagine if he hired the boy scouts, and then he'd be like, "Didn't I tell you, women? This is the seventh little boy you brought me." <laughs> I mean, I'll fuck him, but. I just don't I, get me wrong. Like, don't get me wrong. I'll fuck him. I'll fuck him. Um, <laughs> I'm not above fucking. You know, just some a big movie star. I'm not going to be la di da. He's come I'll, all this way. He's come all this way, and he, he he's looks got fucked. He looks afraid, which I like. And um, <laughs> so we're halfway there, okay? Yeah. So. Uh, no, he, uh, so, uh, <laughs> it's like if he had to choose between a boy who looks afraid <clears throat> and a woman who doesn't look afraid, he's yeah. like, ah, that's right. <laughs> Big tits are fear. <laughs> They're my, but I, I like both equally. Imagine he's in he conversations, he's asking, are you a tits or a fear man? They're like, what? What are you? Th- uh, you, you, you tits are. You're more tits of fear. Yeah. <laughs> What's your thing? Tits you ass of fear. <laughs> I'm a fear man myself. I can't uh, seem to get it done unless the person uh, thinks I'm going to kill him. Uh, I'm Joey Stalin. I'm a horse that lives under a bed who was formerly the head of the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin. And has a Twitter account nowadays. <laughs> they made a Twitter account for Joey Stalin. made a Joey Twitter Stalin. account for Joey Stalin. Oh, that's sick. Um, um, so yes, well, he's, well, he's, well, he's into fear. Do you think Le- he does Leo. that when he's searching on Pornhub? You know, they combine different categories on a porn website. Yes. You know, like Big Tits POV. That's a classic for Vittorio. Yeah. But he's Big Tits fucking scared. Really fucking scared. <laughs> Big Tits has just watched the movie Halloween, the original one, which is very scary. I want to see that right now. Or just like, I think he'd like, like trench warfare fucking, you know, like just like people like in, in Ukraine who's like, uh, you know, like families who are like, uh, but then they, 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 they end up uh, shagging because yes. they still shag. I probably. would say keep an eye out on, uh, who are we talking about again? DiCaprio. DiCaprio. I was about to say Tom Cruise. He's probably into it as well. Whoa, no, no, no. Tom is clean. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Tom massive Cruise, Tom. Oh, I'm a massive Cruise head. But DiCaprio, yes, I, I would say be, be aware if he starts to do the Angelina Jolie thing of trying to adopt children from... Uh, war-torn countries. Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. he's looking for... Yeah, and if you open that can of worms, he's never going to stop. Yeah, he's going to start his own country beside Akon's country and they'll all have their little thing. It's children. I don't like... I, I wouldn't want to know. I don't want to know what Akon's at down there, but I f- know for a fact. He's putting lights on and stuff. Huh? He's got, everybody's got lights and water now. Yeah, but you can't... You always have to be like wary as someone who kind of wants to be God now. It's like, yes, you know... Yes, that, that is a worry always that they're just like... Yeah. Seems helpful, but... Yeah. But we all have that. We all tend towards... Wanting to be God. Horrificness. Huh? Well, you do. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. <sighs> the, uh, yeah, I suppose. Nobody can assume the position of God without becoming a big cunt. Right. Including do, God. Do you think that's why God has kind of like just really pissed all over the earth in the last while? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. With all this equal rights stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's one of his cruelest tricks. Nasty man, <laughs> but you you would have to think that God did like because there was probably a time there when he started everything and he was like, oh look, we're gonna have this lovely little place. Good and intentions. There'll be a tree and there'll be an apple and there'll be a a ladybird and oh what about a fox and then we'll have the people and they'll have fun and then he was looking down, everyone's happy and then he was like, ah, oh, this is fucking just get bored. Yeah, you, you know? gotta put a real annoyance in there. Yes. So then he's just he like invented women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what he said. Bring in the woman. We'll see how happy they'll be then. See if happiness, uh, you know, can overcome that. My obstacle. girlfriend started an argument with me the other day over absolutely fuck all. Did and she? I was just laughing, was making fun of her for starting the argument. Because yeah. I was like, we were having a nice time. Yeah. And look what you've done. Look. And she was like, I don't know why, but it's just happened now and I'm annoyed. What's happened? What was it about? We were doing our little sit down and scroll through the Instagram reels and just watch whatever comes up. It's such a pair of window lickers. It's just fun, you, know. like funny little videos of dogs and all. Yeah, I know we've talked, we've talked about, it is good because you need to, you need to, you need to have stuff that you do together, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what you do now. People used to read books together or go on walks or sailing or, you know. Writing. Yeah, all that stuff. What about writing? But we just consume content. What about sticking your flute upper? (laughs) 
Did you ever consider that, you pansy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm such a child. I'm in a new thing at the minute with a, a lady and I... Do. And you haven't gotten to the point where you just watch reels together? No, no, we're just too busy fucking sucking on each other's kneecaps. You know what I mean? <laughs> just absolutely. Do you know that stage where you're just absolutely... Yeah, you're drunk on yeah, cum. Absolutely. And you're, and you're always worried because like when the dust settles, what are we going to do? I don't know. We don't really... All we've yeah, done so far is like... Yet. Yeah, all we've done so far is that we're like monkeys who are just kind of pawing at each oh, other. Oh, well, this plays into something I was thinking about recently, but I'll tell you this argument. That oh, happened. yeah, tell us the argument. So lad. we were scrolling through this thing and it was this little kind of ginger kid. He's probably about nine years old. He's got these stupid, <laughs> stupid sunglasses on, like a vest and like shorts pulled up there, and he's deliberately acting like just like weird. Yeah, and he's dribbling a basketball and he's lifting up his leg to dribble it through his legs and just looking a fool. And these two women cycle by. Yeah, and he goes, "Hey, ladies!" <laughs> and one of the women goes, "Fuck you!" Oh, Siri thought I was talking to her. Shut the fuck up, Siri. <laughs> you stupid. Don't bring AI ever into the podcast space again. I fucking hate AI. It's just over there. Huh? It's just over there. It's fucking ignorant bitch. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. Don't ever say that again when we're podcasting. Why would we want a song when we're podcasting, you silly little tramp? Yeah? <laughs> Fuck's sake. I'm gonna shag. I'm gonna come over there, shag you, stick my flute up you. I won't. I won't. Please I don't shag do that. my phone. I won't shag your phone. I will shag his fucking phone. Fucking get his phone pregnant and a little a little mic phone is gonna come out. <laughs> it's like I can't sleep but I'm a phone. You know? <laughs> a fucking weird sleepless phone. Um Oh, but so go back. He's go always back. on one percent. Yeah, on 1%. yeah, it just stays on one percent. <laughs> so these women go, "Fuck you!" To the little ginger lad. Yeah, and he fucks the basketball at one of them, Does and it he? hits the front tire of the bicycle, and she goes absolutely flying. Sick! <laughs> he started laughing, and my girlfriend was like, "Why are you laughing at that? That's just encouraging catcalling." I was like, "Yeah, get the fuck out of town." Come Get, on. Yeah, you should have that you should have right there and then called an Uber and ended the relationship. Just been like, there, there's an Uber coming to collect you now. Because I actually can't put up with that again. You're gonna tell me this little ginger hero who's knocked a woman off a bike, but she told she had told him to to fuck off, didn't yeah. she? He's nine years old. And she was like, uh, he doesn't deserve to talk to her in whatever way he wants. I was like, he said, hey ladies, and she said Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I will be honest. I think everyone's a hero in, in the in the story a I little bit. I think it's bit. great because he's trying to look like an idiot. So he acts like an idiot by saying, hey, ladies. Yeah. And she's like, it's a funny escalation to yeah. be like, fuck off. It's, and so funny to tell a child to fuck off. Yeah. It's and it's brilliant. an even funnier escalation to knock someone off their bike. Yeah. With a basketball. Yeah. Which I don't think he thought was going to happen. No. I think he was like, I'm going to throw it in the general direction and be like, uh interaction over but he absolutely guns the front wheel of the bike and she goes flatly glance face first on the road so funny yeah it's uh, the so and and then what was how did your fight with her where did that get to? well i was just laughing because i was like you this just isn't the thing yeah this just isn't but i get look she has been catcalled and listen if it's a man going hey lady it's like fuck, yeah fuck off yeah this is a kid it's a little child. But, 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 but she was like, they're teaching him. But yes. They're teaching him to cat call. And I'm yeah. Like, yeah, but I think that's it. Like, she's worried of what, what man this will become if he's enabled at this age. Yeah. But now, like... This, now he's just going to jump straight to throwing basketballs at women. Well, that's it, because that's he's going to be like... This is kind of probably the origin story of a supervillain. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that just knocks just women off... Full of basketballs. Yeah, and just knocks women off, like, scooters and, <laughs> like, things and just... And he just, I, to be honest, he'd be, that'd be my favorite Marvel movie. <laughs> if that was just a ginger man who knocks women off of <laughs> various so transport devices. Well, we, oh, um, we went to see a Marvel. We went to see Guardians of the, is that a Marvel? I don't, Fuck, it is, is it? yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy, of course yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We went to see that in Bristol. We did go to see that in Bristol, yeah. Enjoyed it, lots of fun. Yeah. Some I, heavier moments than I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, uh, um, which, to, to be honest... I'm, Spoilers, it's yeah, good. 
yeah, it is good. Spoiler alert, it's good. <laughs> yeah, and it is a spoiler because I would have expected it to be dog shit. Well, Guardians Galaxy 3, the first one is good. First one's good. I th- yeah. think I've seen two as well. I think that they're, they're the most like... I just like how how fun they are. It feels like they don't take themselves as seriously as other Marvel movies do. Yeah. I don't watch the Marvel movies. I think they're like an absolute burning uh, bag of dog shit and I refuse to engage in it. And I think it's the infantilization of the whole fucking world to just feed us this fucking hot dog shit and keep us thinking like children and distracted. And there's no good ideas or dialogue or nothing in it. And everyone that likes them should be lined up in the middle of a field and taken out. Like the leaders of the Easter Rising, huh? I quite like them. I know you like them. But can you not like artsy things and not artsy things? Well, no, I just think that... uh, Like if we're saying people should only consume... A high quality art. We're really shooting ourselves in the foot. <laughs> well, no, don't there's get... people watching this. Yeah, there's people watching this. Don't try and increase their artistic integrity. No, it's important to watch some shit things. <laughs> it's very important to take in a certain amount of absolute steaming diarrhea uh, for the mind. It cle- it cleanses it in a way. Uh, uh, no, uh, I know what you're saying. No, my my point is, it's just it's too dominant. Do you know? There's of always. Of course, it shouldn't be the like it's homogenized like consumption of art and storytelling. But like, there's there should be space for it. It's too many things, and it takes. But they just make money, don't they? They make money, and I get it. it you know, they, and money it, people don't like taking risks on stuff. Yeah, that's right. But uh, but it's just gotten too like. You know, the the whole movie industry is too dependent on it now. And it's like, like, for example, there hasn't been a good fucking comedy in like 10 years. I mean, that's an exaggeration. There was a movie called Palm Springs that was fucking good. Andy Samberg, romantic comedy. You felt stuff, you laughed. Uh, hallelujah. But in general. I haven't seen it. In general, if you think, if you think to yourself, right, the 2000s, right? There was all these comedies being made. Super for, bad. Do, super bad. Anchorman, uh, Wedding Crashers, Old School, Zoolander, Step Brothers, Talladega Nights, Blades of Glory. The list goes on. There was It was just a fucking... Uh, I thought that meet those, the parents. Um, some of those uh, Ben Stiller movies, like Blades of Glory, he's not in that. No. But that kind of thing. Some of the, those naughties, they became a bit formulaic. Fucking dodgeball. Yeah, it became a bit formulaic. Starsky and Hutch, you didn't like that? Well, no, but you I big think fool. The, the formulaic in, te- in terms of Dodgeball, Blades of Glory, Zoolander. Yeah. It's all like, what if there was a silly thing that we took very, very seriously? Yeah. It's fucking hilarious. Every time. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> laugh, laugh, laugh. Happy, happy, happy. What's your problem? <laughs> Stupid fuck. What the hell is wrong with you? You want to watch Harry Potter? Go watch Harry Potter and listen. You didn't only have them, then you had Super Bad, Knocked Up, uh, Pineapple Express, you had Jackass. They're fucking brilliant. What's been made in the last 10 years? I'm Just trying to fucking think. Kevin, Kevin Hart's like, Ugh. and he hasn't made one good movie. Biggest comedy star on earth. Name one good movie he made. Yeah, I mean, that is, a, one good that one. is an absolute. And his stand up now is, yeah, he's fucking. But he's a little fucking chancer, is what he is. <laughs> he's a little fucking clown. And he's like, I'm getting up at 4 a.m. Why the fuck would I care about that? Yeah, I hate that comedy rock star lifestyle. Oh, shut the fuck up. Shut up. I work hard and I hustle. So what? It's the death of Tell comedy. Tell us about your arse. You're a comedian. Who cares? Yeah, yeah, I don't I want my pe- comedians working I hate hard. people that talk about my heart. They no. work and fucks me off so I much. Want fucking uh, uh, Jamie Hutchinson. Yeah, Liverpool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been doing coke for a week and just arrives at <laughs> a show. Accidentally funny. Yeah, absolutely. That's you want accidentally funny. You just want fucking, you want fucking slobs crawling out of the bed. They've got fucking pieces of cornflakes in their hair and they just, you know. Yes, I've had a slice, slice of lemon drizzle kick and we're doing a podcast I, now. I fucking huffed up that lemon Great drizzle. Great lemon drizzle by Jeez. the girlfriend. Izzy's no fucking kind of piss, is she? Oh, ho, ho. lad, 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 lad. Forget it. They know her name. They know where you live. Finsbury Park. <laughs> they know. I was too hard. They know really it all. Sorry, well, it's too hard for you. Do you think I felt that? <laughs> really? I had a woman knuckle, sucking on it all night. It hurt my knuckle quite a lot. Yeah, it did. Of course it did. If you that's and that should show you. If you ever tried to go into combat with me, just hitting me is going to hurt you more. 
because I made a fucking granite, baby. I was fucking molded <laughs> in a bog. There was a guy in my rugby team and like under 14s guy called Jason Silo, and he was the first he was the first person I'd ever met who was like really into MMA. He yeah. loved Brock Lesnar, but he's a proper like smick from North Belfast. Yeah. He's like, I fucking love Brock Lesnar, so do. Why don't you marry him then, you freak? <laughs> I don't know why I've gotten a bit. I've but he's talking go about he would some. say I do Brazilian jiu jitsu. Yeah, and I fucking you know whatever. I just learned how to do, it. and he taught us all like self defense stuff. <laughs> it was mad. But uh, he uh, got injured in a match once and had to go to the hospital. And he went in, and <laughs> before he got the X ray, they're like, "No, do you have any metal in your body?" And his dad was like, "No." And Jason goes, "I." And his dad was like, "What the fuck are you talking?" He's like, "I made a steel." <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love it. It's so good, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's so funny to be like, I made a steal. Yeah, there's a great line in, there's a, a Drake song called All Me. Uh, and I got everything, I got everything. I cannot complain, I cannot. I don't even know how much I made, made. I forgot, it's a lot. Fuck that, never mind what I got. Not that back that cause I mm, came up, that's all me. Anyway, there's a line. This was back when 2 Chains was fucking popping. And he wasn't um, making weird documentaries on Vice? I don't know what whatever happened to 2 Chains. I don't know if he lost his jewelry or where, uh, what happened, but uh, there was a one time. One chain, they call him now. Yeah, one chain, yeah. Um, he, well, it, it became kind of, I think Kanye made that statement didn't he that it's like uh millionaires wear chains billionaires like don't and then like literally the next week he's no longer billionaire just i know that's the Chappelle <laughs> line he's just putting his chain back on um but there was a line in that he's song he's been out and about kanye recently has he out and about with a new missus oh oh he got married sure. wearing big like goalkeeper trousers that's yeah. what they look like you know the slightly padded goalkeeper trousers yeah. and she has a big fucking hoop in her like a dump truck so they all do you know what they're all just like i uh, like <laughs> the closest thing to Kim Kardashian possible. Yeah, that's just right. Like, kinda. Yeah, and they're just like just women you've never seen before. Yeah, who have just molded themselves with like freakish. They look like AI. Yeah, just freakish tits and ass, and they're just like, yeah, is this what you want? They, well, see, so this is it. So I fucking, I, I thought I've been, I, I've been thinking about this just every night, just fucking. No, um, but I've uh, no, but I did think to myself uh, recently. What a wonderful, uh, what a wonderful world. World. As I was getting my kneecap sucked, um, I was like, "This is you're fucking singing, lovely." You're just singing. Yeah. I see knees of green, <laughs> elbows too. Lick my ankle while my balls I do are blue. blue. Oh, you oh. went we, different direction. What did you say? <laughs> my balls are blue. Ah. Ah, that was good. <laughs> I said poo. I don't know why I said that. Um, but uh, what was I saying before? I had something good to say. Oh, this is right. You're so, thinking to no, yourself. So you're going to love this now. And you're going to love this because this is so, quite insightful. So um, uh, don't look at me now. You, Nobody's you're gonna ever read? said that before what? they said something insightful. Oh, this is the first. Um, this I'm, I'm teeing up something good. But I was thinking, you know, because... All right, let's say let's say back in the day, right? You're talking back in the the nineties, the two thousands, right? What was the okay. the female body shape that everyone was fucking prattling on about? It's these old skinny uh, skinny who are like they have a name and, for it, huh? They have a name for it. Uh, heroin chic, heroin chic. That's what they call it, and people are very angry about that. But that is what that is what they call it. Yeah, and that magazine had the gall to say heroin chic is back. People went, we need to stop that. Right, right. Um, is it back? Is that a thing? I think people were trying to get it to come back, but right, I come on, think... they're back. Because you don't want to. Because there's no ass. No, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> come on, Mike. Give me some of that, yo. And this is why we're going places. Now, <laughs> listen to this. Now, listen to this. You're going to love this. Um, so I was thinking. Right, back in those days, so you had the heroin cheek, so it was Kate Moss, Naomi Campbell, all these people, they didn't have an arse in their britches, they were fucking, you know, the wind had blown away, and people were like, geez, that's what I have to look like. And, strangely, that was kind of achievable, you, you starve yourself, you get on the coke. Yes, in a weird way, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, that's actually, like, you can just do it, you move to fucking, you know, Somalia, wherever, and... 
Yeah. Get involved Get in the culture. Worm. Next thing, you're fucking the bee's knees, you're gorgeous, and uh, you're on the front cover of the paper because you've died. Um, you, you are dead <laughs> from starvation. But... Yeah, it's like hot. A, it's kind of like uh-huh. the fa- famine. Back in the famine, everyone was so fucking hot. They had grass stains on their mouth from trying to eat the grass. But yeah. Jesus Christ, would you have thrown it into them? You would. You'd stuck, you'd stuck your flute up a few of them. Even even if they were dead, if they were still warm, you'd give it a... Anyway, I've, I've gotten wicked. But, so, my point being, back then, the 90s, the 2000s, these skinny... That was the look, and you could achieve it skinny with a certain ladies. amount of mental illness. But... You can't grow tits. But now this whole thing of, illness. like, the Kardashians have just warped the earth with this thing of, like, a slim waist, massive arse, massive tits. It's just, and actually, the beauty standard is impossible. Well, it is impossible. Yeah. yeah, at least heroin chic was achievable. I get what you're trying to yeah. say. Yeah, like, like it's, it's actually physically fucking impossible like and it's obviously it's leading into the fucking industry you can, like, there's no number of weights or food to eat that will make just your tits and ass massive no you can obviously like get a big hoop a bit a bit the, the girls in the gym and all, doing whatever and you go into the gym and the, the women are just fucking they're in a frenzy they're looking at the little yeah. labels on all the machines and going which just, one makes my tits big yeah. but they're, they're, they're just doing these arse exercises <laughs> and they're sweating and there's a look of uh, in their eyes and you're like just relax your arse yeah. is lovely yeah you have a lovely i'm going back the way to the to the smaller chill chill <laughs> no <laughs> no i'm not uh but i was thinking because if you look at someone like kylie jenner like if you look at a before picture of her and then you look at her now, like she's had so much work done. Like when she dies, like she'll have to be recycled. You know what I mean? She will genuinely. She's made herself into a single use plastic. Yeah. Like she'll come back as like a Pencils sun chair or, or something. Yeah, this yeah, chair is made by recycled Absolutely. Hot <laughs> yeah. Or a slide. Or go, something. Go back as a water slide. I think she could go back as a water slide, <laughs> Kylie Jenner. Genuinely, I think she could. Um, and then that'd be just another life dominated by arses but um uh, i was thinking because we had this girl growing up because back when we were growing up if anyone had that figure like oh a, there was a girl in my year in school called hannah and she had like everyone was just like obsessed with her ass really it was like the thing it was like hannah's everyone ass, hannah's ass. your father hannah, no you said everyone no. <laughs> and that would include in your year, father carlo you as well. wasn't obsessed with the arse of a child <laughs> oh interesting we've stumbled upon that isn't it <laughs> your dad's a pedo lad uh, <laughs> but go on you're obsessed yeah she was just this th- there was this this thing and i think there, there was this bizarre thing and this probably is bad yeah, probably. I, I mean, if I had to say that before I said anything bad on this podcast, it would take a very long time for me to say fucking anything on this yeah. podcast. But there is this thing where girls kind of appear mm. and it's a combination of men becoming aware, like boys becoming aware of girls. Yeah. When you're like, oh, fuck, they're a thing that I'm interested in. Yeah. But also it's a combination of like girls uh, like becoming like just like going through puberty, boys and girls going through puberty at some time, but everyone hits it at different points. So some boys are just, you hit it quite late, didn't you? Very late. You're just a wee lad though. Oh, I was, a, I was a child till I was so in my let's, 20s. Let's, as I always like to do, let's do it the other round. I'm sure there was plenty of girls in your year in school and it's just like, little Mikey's just a boy, 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 yeah. boy, boy. And then 16, you were like, oh, they, they became much more aware of Big Mike when he became Big Mike. That's right. Right. So then this thing songs happens. about me. Different girls would just appear in the consciousness of the boys of the year, they just go, whoa, yeah. where the fuck did Hannah come from? That's right. Hannah didn't look like that before summer. That's exactly right. And it was a combination of, we didn't look at any girls before summer, and Hannah had become a woman. After st- <laughs> She'd summered well. She'd summered well, your father said. Your father creepily would say in the kitchen. Oh, she summered well. And you know that thing, the first day back from school? Yeah. <laughs> Just cool. you know you do what what did you do over the summer holidays? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the lads are like, I became aware of ass and tits. Yeah. And they're like, Oh, well done. Well, well done. done. And I was like, goes, I grew I grew ass and tits, and the boys were like, Oh, oh. <laughs> this is a dangerous mix. It's a marriage made in heaven, Hannah. 
think the, the stars are aligning for you and 15 lads here. <laughs> it was just Dono. I remember Dono. God, we were terrible. You and Dono? Dono kissed her on a night out. Hannah. And there was four Donals in my ear, so you'll never know which one it was. And Dono... Um, uh, <laughs> Dono walked into school the next day and like, did you, did you shift Hannah last night? Yeah. And yeah, and then every boy in the ear high-fived them. Really? <laughs> he went through. Because <laughs> he was the first one to like... Yeah. He did it. I think they're still <laughs> together, which is absolutely fucking insane. Because this is from the fifth, this is like 10 years ago. Yeah. But think about it, right? If you think about it, because mm. people who get um, positive affirmation for something on, on that level. Yeah. Um, so they say like that if people who are popular in like high school, very right, like that they that they never find out who they really are because they get used to that feeling mm. of being uh, popular. So they never rock the boat too much. So yes, they, just, so they get stuck. That's right, and they just stay, uh, you know, playing GAA popular. forever. And I wanna uh, be popular. Yeah. So they don't take many risks. So this guy has gotten a high five off of everyone in the year. Yep. For fucking shifting this girl. So he's like, well, by God, this I can. I can never let her go. Yeah. Or those high fives will be rescinded. Yes, I would rescind my high five if he yeah. let her go. You would have taken it back. How fucking that. dare you. Yeah. I'd find him. And I go, I might still find him. I take my high five back. I'd suck his knee. Fucking bastard. Have I spoken about this on this podcast where uh, if we had a free class, we would find an empty classroom, write every girl in the year's name down in some kind of like NCAA style bracket. No. And pit them against each other and do like a tournament to find out who was the hottest girl in the year. And that we would have like intense debates about it. Who so is this? you would have people on different sides of the classroom arguing. But that Hannah, was son, that's a fact. Hannah was hotter than Orla, was hotter than Fiona or whatever. So can I, let's just bring this back a second. <laughs> How many of you nerdy virgins were in the room at the time it's making your little fucking little whore <laughs> world boy. cup? Uh... Let's just let's just bring this back now. It's like 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 twenty to thirty, I think. And how many women were entering the tournament? Like, because there were some women that didn't even qualify for the World Cup. You yeah, know, we were that got we, knocked out by Iran. Yeah, it's, it's the NBA playoffs, right? Yeah, you the top sixteen. Top sixteen. Yeah, right. And you do a bracket. But so let me just 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 fill out the story for but me. What's interesting is depending on how you arrange the bracket, you would come out with a different answer every time. And how it was argued and who you, if you had like an easy side of the group. Yeah, because there was one side of the group where it's just like one girl and then the rest just stroke victims kind of thing. But we, but we would also, and this makes it okay, yeah. we would also do it for the boys in the year. You would do it for the boys yeah. in the year? What? <laughs> even though, You're such a even though, even though nobody was looking, we were like, well, we should do it we for should, the boys. We should balance the gender and cure. <laughs> Guys, we certainly don't want to be, you know, leaning on tropes or, or reinforcing old kind of stigmas. So we're going to sexually rate the men. I'd say you nearly fucking, the pen nearly fell out of your hand. I was just uh, excited to I argue. I think Dory Fancy should be in No, it. Alex McConaughey was always my shirt. Was he a hot lad? Hans some boy. Oh, really? Everybody wanted Donald McKeever because he was the down minor captain. Big fucking. Down syndrome minor captain. <laughs> <laughs> fucking ugly cunt. I don't know who he is. <laughs> but he was jacked. Like, yeah. sex pack, huge. But right. I was just like, I like a softer, a kinder, gentler politics that Wait, is Alex McConaughey. Right. And so uh, uh, Alex McConaughey, he was what? Like he was the thinking man. So he kind of had thoughts <laughs> on things. Alex McConaughey's nobody's thinking man. No. He didn't, he didn't <laughs> believe he'd in anything eyes, or anyone. He had lovely eyes and he looked a bit like a monkey. There is something about monkey shapish, uh, you know, uh, looking kind of people who have that. That gives me like fucking, you know. Alex had a great uh, signature move when he was uh, out on a night out. Is he would go to the bar, get two bottles of beer, and then stand in the middle of the dance floor and just dance like this. Yeah, one beer in each hand, and just watch like my milkshake brings all of it, like. And like a fucking moth to a flame, the women would come. Do you want to know how socially bad I was with women when I, I was a teenager? I never wanted to know anything more in my life. I, my, the, the lads in my rugby team would shove me into the middle of, a da of the dance floor at a nightclub, wait until a woman who thought I looked nice but didn't know I was a fucking idiot yeah. would walk up, try and talk to me, mm. and I would freak out and piss her off somehow. Yeah. And they would basically swoop in and like get the rebound. <laughs> So you'd spaz, so they, like you were the bait, so they were fishing and they threw you out there 
<laughs> so women would come over. Cause you're, cause you've done the, the illusion. You're a mirage of an attractive person, but of course, upon talking to you for over two minutes, you, there is a feeling of kind of vomit starts. Going. So they threw you out. So they catch women using you the and just there. watch you spaz. They would watch women bounce off me and just catch them on the other side and go, "Geez, he was weird, wasn't it?" And it's a great little conversation starter. Autistic, possibly, would you think? <laughs> future artist um yeah that's it we we had a fucking so we had a lady in, in our year uh and her name was uh we'll say rosie um and her name was rosie and uh but she had like uh really like really big boobies and uh you know like they were as big as you could imagine she was i'm surprised she didn't float away um just like a fucking hot air balloon <laughs> like just, with helium yeah just like <laughs> Poppins, but without the umbrella, just fucking woo. So, but she she was famous. Like she was famous, <laughs> like around the whole city. Yeah, just for being really her big boobs, and nice ass. Oh, the and pressure just, of that. Oh my god! Like she since like fucking just like fucking went to Berlin and fucking like chopped her hair off and like you know completely kind of desexualized herself in mm. terms of looks. Um, which she, could I, be a, uh, she could be a, a gentleman girl. She could be a gentleman girl. <laughs> she could. And that's the pity is that she never did ascend to that. Um, but so she, but like everyone, like you'd be, you'd be like fucking, you know, everyone would be talking about her. Like you'd have fucking like, you know, like uncles and stuff. And be like, how's Rosie getting on? You have to try it's a fine, yeah. a fine woman, that Rosie. She's a fine woman. She, she, she may try to make sure she stays in Kilkenny anyway. That's just, just, was, just dairy farmer, yeah. just looking at others. Yeah. <laughs> she should get a good farm. Yeah. So you probably get six, seven gallons a day out of Rosie, would you? It's not that you'd, you know, but she'd, she'd do it. She'd be, she'd be worth a small fortune if we could convince her to let herself be milked. Now, don't say I said that. But if we were to bring her down to the to the milk and parlor, there could be a lot, a lot taken out of her. Um, but so, but uh, Rosie, anyway. But like, so yeah. So everyone would be like that. But they, there was like, I almost feel like that people would have paid her a salary just to stay in Kilkenny, like to stay in the town, just because she was really good. Because you would bring in tourism. Yeah, because you'd bring in tourism from like Tipperary didn't have anyone like that or Wexford or Carlo. Like they would have came from miles around. And it just, honestly, it just like. Roll up, roll up. Yeah. See the big titted woman. <laughs> and you'd tap her out with like a little a little cow stick and she has to go into the middle of the bench. She's like one of those old strong men from the circus, yeah. but she just lifts her own tits. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone, oh. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so because she she was just great for the morale of the city. She was great for the morale, like you know what I mean. Like because people would often say like we have two because we were winning hurling all Ireland. So yeah. it's like we have hurling and we DJ have, Carey, DJ Carey. So we had hurling and we had Rosie. They were the two things, and then <laughs> probably the third most uh, famous character then was a fella named. Tootsie Barry. Tootsie Barry? Tootsie Barry, yeah. Now, so Big Tootsie. Cock. <laughs> what? Tootsie actually had his um, legs, uh, he, he lost his legs in um, in an accident that was done completely on purpose, uh, where he had his, his legs burnt off by like uh, other people in the town. Now, Tootsie was no angel himself now, you know, and he was famous because, so this is what I always think, I always thought when like people were like, oh, Kanye is, like they'd be like, Kanye is crazy, you know? Yeah. And in my head, I was like, Kanye releases like a new album every year. He runs about four different businesses. Like whatever you say about him, yes, he comes out and says crazy stuff. A lot of times it's the court fucking publicity and the press but like the level of focus you would need to operate on the level he operates is just and to produce as much he produces is yeah. unbelievable because Tootsie Barry this was the guy who I grew up with he would roll around the town of Kilkenny right in a wheelchair in a wheelchair he yes. wasn't just no no he wasn't <laughs> 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 do you ever see that film Hook oh, Jesus Tootsie Barry again he's just yeah just like literally <laughs> rolling. It's not the most efficient I way of travel. I have seen Hook. 
Yeah, but there's try and stop me, th- me. That's right. They're trying try yeah. and stop me. Z- yeah, it's fucking. Z- yeah, it's fucking brilliant. Class. But there was this lad, one of the lost boys, that he's like, oh, oh, lad, one of one of the most tragic heroes oh, of all the, time. He tucks his head between his knees yes. and he rolls and he down, rolls the, down plank. the thing. <laughs> the little fat child. He's the best fat child that's ever been on screen. You're doing it, Peter. Yeah. You're imagining. Oh, lad. <laughs> to we used to yeah, watch man. that movie so much. It's like, so good, man. That fucking Rufio's death. And just like, I just, I always wanted to be like you. You know? You're not the pan. Yeah. Oh, fuck, you man. You can't even fly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's sick, lad. That's really good what you just did. Um, uh, Tootsie Barry. Tootsie. But so anyway, so I would see Tootsie Barry. So what was, is one of his biggest party pieces was that he would go around. So in his thing, he was not. He was an unpleasant character, and uh, uh, anyone would tell you that. But he would bite his tongue till his to- till his mouth filled up with blood, and then he would spit the blood at people and shout, "I have AIDS." And to me now, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was a he was a gentleman. There was a kindness to him, but uh, you know, he uh, told great stories. But so Tootsie was <laughs> he was notorious. Like he was famous in Kilkenny. There was DJ Carey, Rosie, and Tootsie Barry were the three kind of most famous people. Tootsie in Kilkenny. Barry, the man with his cock as long as his legs. Cock as long as his legs. <laughs> Um, he didn't. Thankfully, he didn't have. A, I, I don't. I think the cock got got incinerated as well. Oh but um, I know. How did he get the AIDS? Huh? <laughs> I don't know. See, we never really knew whether he had it or he was just being as nasty as he could be. But either way, it was off color behavior. I mean, oh yeah. God, it's so horrible. Yeah, it was. Yeah, no, he wasn't being invited around many places for dinner. But um, so Tootsie. But so when t- so when people were like, "Kanye is crazy," I was like. You know, that like to me, Tootsie Barry's crazy. You yes, wouldn't, and you're yeah, not going to yeah. compare. Oh, Kanye and Tootsie, birds of a feather, to crazy men. Because if you look at it as well, like it's like Kanye crazy. It's like he married Kim Kardashian, one of the most fucking beautiful women in the world. It was fucking dogs that wouldn't let Tootsie pet him. You know, they were just like, <laughs> ah, oh, they were like, he tried to give I him heard food. He has AIDS. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they were like trying to give him food. They'd be like, yeah, I'm full, Tootsie. I'm, uh, yeah, I've, uh, I'm all good for that. Um, but also. So, so when we used to have to, mm. we would uh, time, yeah. okay. be trying uh, buying uh, drink, right? Alcohol. We used to buy you it. You get Tootsie to buy it for you? Uh, would we get Tootsie to buy us booze? No, fuck no. Um, because that'd, See, be, that'd, be, that'd be AIDSy booze. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, which is not the kind of booze you'd want. You'd want like fucking like booze that's like like HIV negative, you know? Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, that's what I order. In, <laughs> can I get a HIV negative pint of Guinness, please? Thank you. And then there's some places that are like, you know, in London that are like, we can't. We Sorry, don't I can't that. guarantee it. Um, can't guarantee it. <laughs> yeah. I'd have a nightclub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go on. Yeah, but so uh, we you wanted to get booze, so we get booze in this place called Pat Carroll's, um, and it was uh, on this place called John Street, and it was just the only place that'd serve you. You know, yes, like they were yeah, kind yeah, of place. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of place you'd have to prove you were underage for them to give you right. stuff. They wouldn't <laughs> give me that now. They tell me to get the fuck out. Show me your um, club penguin membership. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, uh, but we go in there, but so Tootsie would be like patrolling John Street. So like, say here's Pat Carl's pub, Tootsie would be like just going up and down John Street. So like up and down past it all the time in this thing, you know? Um, so it was like a video game. Like you would have to, he'd be like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> so he would go up far enough and then you had to try run into Pat Carroll's and get the booze before Tootsie, ding, 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 yeah. ding, 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 came down. But the only difference between this and a video game is if you lost, Space. you got a face full of aids blood. <laughs> Um, (laughs) um, (laughs) but uh, anyway, yeah, so he was, he was, did you have any famous 'er ne'er-do-wells in in Belfast? Not a 'er ne'er-do-well, there's the violin, but man. (laughs) (laughs) I don't even know what you said there. Violumpet? What's that? A trumpet made of violets? What? No, he had a wee violin, but it had like a trumpet sticking out of it. 
to make it louder. Really? Yeah. And he would just play it outside Castle Court Shopping Centre. Never a song. No. What I'm loving in my head is he has this instrument with a trumpet on it, but that he's just doing it all with his mouth. <laughs> Like you were doing it there. Like, <laughs> but he would just smile at you. Yeah. We flat, like Romanian fellow with a flat cap. And he yeah. just, oh. And the only other thing I heard was in the Holy Lands, which is what the student area of Belfast is called. Oh. In the Holy Lands, because it's Damascus Street, Palestine Street. They're all named after. And that's where all the like rough as fuck culture students live in the Holy Lands. Really? It's very funny. Like God hasn't visited there in a yeah, long time. No, There's not a drop of Christ in the Holy Lands. It's fairly similar to the Gaza Strip. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, there, there's it's kind of a conglomerate of culture students and Romanians live there mostly. And uh, I did hear tell of um, there was a Romanian fella who would jump in front of your car. And and go to the window and go fifty pound broken leg go away. What fifty pound broken leg go away? Yeah. So what's he? What is he proposing there? He, you pay him fifty pounds. He won't break your leg. No, no, he no longer has a because he's saying you broke my leg with your car. Ah, and I'll sue you. Right, but fifty pounds and I'll go away. That's my that's my best offer. <laughs> I'll go away with my broken leg. Forever. <laughs> with my leg that's definitely broken. My leg that's definitely broken that I'll get fixed with fifty quid. <laughs> I don't want fifty quid for my broken leg. And how did how did that work out? Broken from? leg go away. Yeah. I think he's still doing it. He's still doing it. Still hustling up. Still this is Gary V. He does that and then he goes to the garage sales <laughs> on the weekend and buys baseball cards. <laughs> Who Gary V does? Fifty pound or a Ken Griffey Junior <laughs> rookie card? Does Gary V buy baseball cards? Yeah, yeah. it's a massive thing. He's a little flute as well, isn't buy he? Buy and sell. Are you on TikTok? Huh? Are you on TikTok? You I'm, gotta be making content. Yeah, he's a little fucking dope, isn't he? Just the way he talks it, like if this motivational with everyone. What you need to, everyone can start. Everyone sh- it should have a business. Everybody. Everyone should own their own business somehow. It, yeah. Everyone should have employees. Well, no, there should be no one with one employee because no, everyone everybody. should have their own business. But this is the thing. Yeah. He's like, you should have employees. You should hire someone to work for you. But he says it to everyone. Absolutely everyone. And you go, well, who's going to... Do you know that society doesn't work unless there's people to work in McDonald's? And in fact, yeah. unless most people have shit jobs. Yeah. Society does not Fucked. function at all. Fucked completely. So, so we all get these same like little positive messaging loops of everybody needs to do this, but in reality, it's like no, actually, most people, most people actually, need to just know their place and stay we, where they are. That's absolutely. You get right. a lot of motivational podcasts nowadays, but Megan Vittorio's guide to parenting will tell you just be happy with what you got, man. Nothing wrong with being stay where you are, mediocre, shh, 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 and just fucking shh. having fun, living life. Because everyone does tell Live you for the weekend. Everyone tells you you're Hate not worth your job. Shooting. Yeah. Hate your wife. Yeah. Stay with her because she had the best ass. Yeah. In Aquinas Grammar School, <laughs> Belfast. <laughs> That's Hannah we're talking about. A very specific person. <laughs> Hannah and Donald, a couple <laughs> who are very unhappy. <laughs> and she's pregnant. He doesn't want it. But he doesn't even want to live himself. So it's. But he's you quite know. tall. But he's tall. So it's not. He can see over walls and stuff. So it's not a completely wasted life. He can see into people's gardens, and that's always fun, particularly if someone's out sunbathing in the nip. But the point is... Yes. If you hate your job... Yeah. Good. Yeah. Society needs more of that. That's right. Less ambition for the folks. Absolutely. Um, Try to get demoted. Try to get, if you can... um, Offer Dress for the job you want. Show up dressed as a cleaner. Fuck, that'd be... That'd actually be a great thing of, like, if you do have, like, a job, KPMG... Or PWC, which are obviously both fucking um, dustbin establishments. But yeah, it's like, just evil, evil places. But like, just come in one day dressed as a cleaner and just say, do you know what? I'd like, I'd like, I've got 70 grand too much a year and yeah. I'd like less. And I would like to clean the fucking skid marks off the inside of a toilet bowl. Why not? I was in Honest, Newcastle and, yeah. and I, I, I was grabbing a drink before I got on the train back to London. Yeah. And someone had done a shit in the urinal. Really? It does seem like there is there, there's an air of that up. 
It's a very north. staggery place, yeah. is Newcastle. It's very like, that's, 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 and there's so many like different parties. Right. But anyway, before we finish the public episode, we should talk about your trip to the north. Oh, fuck. But what time, what time are we on there now? 54, you have six minutes to tell us uh, what half a word was. Whoa, whoa, we'll uh, save that. We'll have to save that for the Patreon because there's a lot in that. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. We'll do that on the Patreon podcast. Yes. So I'll talk about, I was on half a word. For first time, we'll talk about that. We've talked about the coronation. The coronation, we talked which about we watched some of it. Yeah, we watched some of it. Obviously, now we're a bit late to the party on it, but our take is going to be fucking hot as shit. <laughs> Maybe we could talk about the coronation now, and then we'll talk about yeah, how Yeah, I don't think the coronation chat's going to last long. No. through six minutes of coronation Charles chat. is retired. No. <laughs> um, I, I take back that word. I actually said that word on stage at the have a word live show in birmingham i was like that is retired and like even the lads were like they're like lad you can't you know the have a word boys were even like you'd feel you always be like that and they're like mike doesn't know how to talk you know and i was like i keep forgetting yeah it is a bad word to say i don't know why i've gotten like i don't know what's happened to me that i've gotten this way to that i'm in my head you got I'm like, back into calling stuff that yeah but I'm, I'm gonna get back out of it i'm not saying that i've again. gone back into calling stuff gay and i probably need to jump back out that's of it right again. i said that to you didn't i yeah remember that i was like we stopped. someone unsubscribed from the patreon because i said the f word you did say the f word on the patreon did once, you? yeah i don't think so i think they might have misheard me well, you dirty little bastard you're a nasty <laughs> little really fucker funny. you just called me it. yeah but no <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not going there. I'm We're not, good boys again. I don't have blood on my hands. But the coronation, this was my, uh, my take on it was that Charles looked fucking miserable. Oh yeah, he didn't look happy. People say, you know, the, the royal family's got blood on their hands. His, his hands are interesting because his, his hands are full of blood. Yeah, they are absolutely. He's got blood in his hands. He's got blood in his hands, <laughs> which is a different problem, but a problem nonetheless. His yeah. hands look fucking decrepit. Yeah. And I, I think the joke has been made a million times about like poor Camilla. Oh yeah, yeah, with yeah, those, yeah, yeah. With those digits, fucking, you know, she's playing off your leg like blinder like though, hasn't she? Camilla, yeah, why not dying? Well, she also like convinced him to off that lady, Diana. <laughs> she did. Well, that's what I was thinking would be would have been a great thing because you saw him there and he has a little crown on and he's so old to be playing fancy. He looks so silly. It's to be fucking that old. mad. But I heard someone talk about it being like. They have to wear that stuff. Yeah. Because it would be so evident how crazy it is if they weren't. Yeah, how silly the whole thing is. Yeah, you'd be like, wait, what? They're just people? Yeah. He's just. It's just fucking, man. The people queuing up in the streets in tents yeah. for like a week yeah. to see Charlie. The king Charlie in a golden the... yeah, yeah. carriage. Yeah. Yeah, it's it it's it's mad, and especially because like everyone, like no one likes Charles. Like he's one of the most unpopular members of the royal family yeah. ever. And you could see on his face, he's looking around, and he's like, you know, it in his fucking heart, he's just like, I know nobody likes me. <laughs> you know it. You can see on his face, he's frowning. He's like, none of you like me. I know you're. He's like, you know, I don't know if you ever had this in your school. Like there was a kind of a rich kid who like. You'd be bribed to go to his birthday right, yeah, by yeah, his yeah. mother, and he wouldn't be. Yeah, and he. No. His mum would phone your mum and be yeah. like, "Just checking that yeah. Mike's gonna come to the party," There's, and your mum would go, "Mike," and you go, no. and you go yeah. "He'll be there," and you yeah. go, "Fuck, Fuck. sense, mum." Right. I don't want to go. But there's gonna be a bouncing He's castle. Weird. Yeah. But there's gonna be a bouncing castle and loads of lovely food and shit. So you're like, fuck it. And Charles is like that. Everyone's kind of been made to be there and he knows it. And he's just like, none of you like me. And then, uh, but I was thinking that it would have been a fucking great crack if like as soon as the little crown goes on his head, <laughs> that he was just like, I did have her killed. <laughs> I did have her killed. And I give myself a royal fucking pardon. <laughs> so there. And he does like some weird yeah, hand like, movement. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> and so it shall be struck from the record. <laughs> and then, I love if he just misunderstood. He thought it was like that they were magic sticks that he was being given. Yeah. And someone had to lean in and go, no. And he would go, Kew! but he's just making the noise with his mouth. And he goes, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it not working? <laughs> he fully, because he fully he bought into the appointed by God thing. <laughs> but he thought like, he was magic. He admits now. to a murder and like the security comes to go get him and he says, Pew! <laughs> and they're like, what are you doing? And he's like looking at us, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> he's checking the batteries. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and then they come to go <laughs> real close to him and he tries to put it in his own mouth. <laughs> <And he> just... <laughs> <laughs> it's like this bloody thing <laughs> it never works when you want it to <laughs> it's tries to kill Camilla for no <laughs> ah fuck um, he definitely tried to take a shot at Harry Harry was there he was there just in normal clothes jeans yeah. and a t-shirt I think imagine how awkward it would be like how, what like like knowing the amount of scrutiny that's on you and just knowing like everyone in his family must fucking hate him like yeah, but then I think Ant from Ant and Deck took a blow on that one because people were thinking, oh, everyone's going to be paying attention to how Harry looks. But then did you see Ant from Ant and Deck? No. He was up there at the coronation just going... <laughs> like he... Like, looked so coked up, it's crazy. He was on drugs. Yeah. Fuck he me. He was gurning like... Good Lord. There is something mad. Like, just when you, like, people have completely lost... The run of their lives, you know, yeah. like that you're turning up to a coronation. Well, yeah, I on know coke. I know mates from back home who God, would, that's fun on Christmas Day, like they would go around their granny's house and just to get through the party would do a bump of coke in the bathroom. And I'm like, you're off the oh, your granny's house. I know you're fucked. I knew a guy as well who did who would like do bangers at Christmas, like just like drop an ecstasy, like to get. And you're like, it's just to Christmas me, it's, is great. It, that's so dark. There's ever a day you don't need. Drugs, know, but but this is coming from a healthy family life. I mean, I like like I my family's grand. Like I like Christmas too, but there are some people that fucking yeah, hate yeah, Christmas. Christmas. I get you know? that. Um, but Coke's not going to solve it, huh? Coke's not going to solve it. I mean, it does a little bit. <laughs> it's like this is class, and you just like see like your fucking mother writhing on the ground after your father hitting her, and just be like, that's just it's different, isn't it? You know. <laughs> Sick moves, you're like yeah. copying her dance moves. Yeah, recording it, throwing it on TikTok. Um, oh all right, that'll so be a I'm going to talk episode. about being on the Have a Word podcast on our Patreon. I had a fucking uh, great Patreon.com forward slash parenting for as little as three pounds, pounds a month. We won't fucking kill ourselves. That's right. For another month. Yeah, for That'll be month. good, wouldn't it? And for as little as three pounds a month, you can sponsor someone who's saying you have very dry lips. For as little as three pounds a month, we can build a well so Mike can drink more water over I, the course of a day and I, we'll buy him some Carmex as well. I did take that into account, someone saying about my dry lips. They look better. And I've been like drinking a lot of cum to... Oh, that's actually, actually, that's actually quite salty. No, I've been using cocoa butter and putting it on my lips. Like so. a black woman. Yeah. What's wrong with that? I did acid and thought I was a black woman. I've told you that, right? Good. Couldn't stop feeling my own arse. Anyway. Uh, Just like Hannah. Yeah. Patreon.com forward slash parenting for extra stuff. Bye bye.